previously on the Skip and Josh Sports Show. All these teams that have already had their bye weeks, they come out of the bye week and they play really poorly because, you know, they got to wear, they got to get the rust off. Right. They've been so, sitting on a beach in the Bahamas for a week. So, I mean, all these players are going to come back and they're still going to have all that rust on them and there's going to be this new coach. So, I'm not expecting the Canadians to win uh, on Saturday against Winnipeg. I don't know what's going to happen. You're listening to the Skip and Josh Sports Show. Hey, Skip. Hey, what's up? How are you? Good. Very good. So normally we only speak once a week, but of course we had a special episode in the middle of the week. Yeah. Um, so now I, I don't feel like I haven't spoken to you in a while because I spoke to you recently. Yeah. It was a big week with the lead up to the, the big game this afternoon. So much hype this week. Um, unbelievable things happen when the Montreal Canadiens make a coaching change. Yeah. Uh, for example, I believe uh, their practice yesterday was broadcast live on, on RDS.ca. I don't think it was just on RDS.ca. I think it was on the network, on TV. So only only in Montreal, I think, would that happen. Maybe Toronto as well. Yeah. Um, yeah. And then, of course, there were several hundred people at the Canadians' practice facility, just fans, just there watching. I heard uh, from from some of the journalists that I follow on Twitter, like the Habs journalists, that they've never seen uh, a turnout of reporters uh, at a Habs practice before like this. It was it was jam packed, which is which is ridiculous because well, it's totally ridiculous. I mean, the other thing that's ridiculous is the fact that a first place team fired their coach. If you think about it, that's kind of ridiculous. It is, but I mean, we went over all the reasons why he was fired. You know, yeah, let's like, not rehash that. Yeah, but my first assessment after seeing this afternoon's game is. The coach behind the bench may have been different, but the players on the ice were pretty much exactly the same and played pretty much exactly the same way, except for maybe Carey Price. Yeah, this was the same lifeless team that we've seen for the last two months, um, except the goalie played well today and actually kept them in the game. Other than that, I mean, God, it was a boring game. I was I was almost falling asleep, actually, in the third period because nothing was going on. And, you know, it's the same players and <laughs> there was so much hype this week about on the radio and on the, the Internet. Like, what are Julian's lines going to be and what player is going to benefit the most from the new coach? It's going to be Galchenyuk. You know, he likes to ride the hot hand and the, he likes to have a big playmaker. It's going to be this player because that's the kind of player that Julian likes. It's going to be Weber because, you know, they compare him to Chara. You know, he likes to give his his big horse, so to speak you know tons of ice time but you know when you watch the game it was the same thing you know Galchenyuk started on the top line he didn't do so well then he mixed up the lines then was back where he was you had Placanic playing with Gallagher which is like supposedly your second line you know the Canadians have no hope of contending for anything if that's your second line because both of those guys cannot score on an empty net even right now <laughs> you know like well, it's clear that uh, the Canadians do need more offense. I mean, that's been clear for a while. I hope it's clear now after today's game, you know, that then they're going to do something. About and, and I mean, look, it's not like uh, top 10 forwards are growing on trees. So yeah. there's not that many available, if any. And if they are, they're going to come at a costly price. Yeah, well, you could, you, you've could you heard not just um, out of the Canadians camp, because they're usually pretty quiet about a lot of things. But I read this week, you know, that other teams are interested in Matthew Shane. Ottawa is supposedly interested in him. And basically they said... Who what, isn't? What they said, basically, what Joe Sackick's asking is ridiculous and they're not going to do it. He should ask for a ridiculous thing because Duchesne is, what, 25, 26? Yeah, he should ask for, for the So, world. So, I mean, I wouldn't even entertain trading him, like I said before. He has nothing to lose by asking for a lot. Right. Let, let everybody come to him. Exactly. He's in a position of strength. They're in I'm last not, place. Uh, They're going nowhere. You know. I'm not holding my breath uh, that the Canadians are going to get Matt Duchesne. I actually think there's a better chance that they could get John Tavares than Matt Duchesne. I'm not saying they're going to get either of them, but uh, I think there's a better chance of John Tavares being on the Canadians than Matt Duchesne. I think it's actually 50-50 right now that the Canadians are going to make the playoffs. <laughs> you know, it's interesting. I was having this conversation with someone this week. I think it's a guarantee that the Canadians make the playoffs, and I'll tell you why. They have a buffer in the standings, I know. 
Not there, only that, there's no one. That ninth team is no one's. No one's fighting for it right now. Like the Leafs, the Leafs are pretty comfortable in the eighth spot where they the are. The division right? that they're in yeah. is so weak, I and know. all you have to do is finish one, two, or three in that division, and you're in. Yeah, and like I was saying, like even that that second wild card spot, so to speak, which the Leafs are occupying right now, like the Flyers and like whoever's in ninth and tenth are like. They're, those teams look even more dead than the Canadians. I do think the two wild card spots are going to come from the Metropolitan Division. Yeah. And I think there's only going to be three teams from the Canadians Division, but I think there'll be one of them. Right. But like Tony Kornheiser says, everything's 50 50. Everything is 50 50. It either is going to happen or it's not going to happen. <laughs> right. That's absolutely true. Yeah. But I mean, they definitely. They definitely needed a shakeup, but the coaching change, maybe it was weird timing and that, you know, he only had one practice with them. And then, you know, even I told you, though, I, I told you that even if there's a new coach, the players are the same. The roster is the same. There's only so much that a new coach can do. And, and I've said this so many times. The coach gets so much blame, too much blame when they lose and too much credit when they win. Yeah. So there's only so much you can do. I have a feeling a lot of people are going to start changing their mind on what Michel Therrien did here as the coach when they see that nothing really is going to have changed with the new coach. You know, one thing I noticed today, Shea Weber looked tired and slow today. He did. He did. And I mean, he just had a week off. So that's no, you know, what's your excuse for being tired and slow today? I wonder if he's nursing some kind of injury that we don't know about. But I mean, I remember, do you remember how bad Shea Weber was in the playoffs last year for Nashville? I mean, I didn't see any other games, but I heard a lot of people saying in that, that in the last the couple of games, especially the last game that where they got eliminated, he was really exposed. And when the Canadians traded for him, I was like, oh, God, I don't know about this. You know, like I know he's Shea Weber, but he looked pretty lousy, like near the end, like at, especially at the end of the year. And then he started off so well. I was like, oh, no, he was probably fine. And But you're right. He looks uh, he looks kind of lumbering. And and that uh, the penalty he took where he shot it over the glass, I realized he didn't do that on purpose. Yeah. But that's a sign of being tired because yeah. normally he'd be able to control where the puck goes. Yeah, yeah, you're right. That's just my uh, my observations from the game. I actually, um, there are some guys on the Canadians who did play a decent game, like Paul Byron. I thought he played well. Well, he always brings it, that little guy, you know. But there's only so much he can do. Right. Of course. But, you know, if Pacioretty and Radulov are not scoring, then they're not going to score. That's the way it's been for the last few right. months. And by the way, when the Canadians got a power play with about 10 minutes left in the third, and then seconds later, Radulov took that penalty to negate it. Classic. Pretty much the game was over right now. Yeah, I agree. They, so, got, they got some decent scoring chances in the third. But, like, I never honestly was like when they went down 2-1, to one, I was like, ah, that's the game. I never felt like they were they were going to come back. And uh, and Dustin Bufflin manhandled the Canadians today by himself, single-handedly, yeah. literally single-handedly. They, sh they show the stats. He leads the league in ice time. And he had one play where he had only one hand on his stick, and there were three players on him, and he still managed to get the pass to, uh, yeah, he to kicked the front it, of the net. He kicked it to himself, and I think he changed changed hands like <laughs> with his stick and somehow got the puck across. It was pretty great. Yeah. He's, he's a monster, you know? If, when he's playing on top of his game, he's he's fantastic, you know? You know, let's not get carried away, though. This is the Winnipeg Jets. They're not exactly world beaters. No, they're not. Canadians playing against the Jets at home should have won this game. That's and true. Canadians only managed to get 20 shots on goal the entire game. Yeah. Well, it's on to the next one for the Habs. So we'll see where they go from here, right? Yeah, and I mean, I actually, when I saw who was a healthy scratch tonight or this afternoon before the game, I agreed with those healthy scratches that uh, Claude Julien made. Who was it? Dejarnay? And and Sven Andraghetto. Yeah, I agree with that too. Uh, Patteron. Yeah, I agree with that too. I'm, although I'm not that. a fan of Nesterov right now. I, I don't, I'm not crazy about I actually him. like him so far. Matthew had a good observation. <laughs> He's like... I'm feeling a little bit of uh, Rafael Diaz vibe from Nesterov. <laughs> That's funny. Which is true, right? I mean, when, but I like Rafael Diaz. You're the well. Whenever I think about Diaz, I'm like, I always think about like when they got him. People are like, oh, he has a lot of potential. He's a bit of an offensive-minded defenseman. And by the time they got rid of him, no one cared. And I think it's the same thing with Nesterov. You know, people are like, oh, he has potential. He can skate. He has a decent shot. But he's interchangeable with just about anybody. Yeah, but a lot of guys are interchangeable. I, I'm, I'm okay with Nesterov as the sixth defenseman. I have no issue with that. That's true. I agree with that. We'll see what Julianne can do uh, 
during the week, more practices, a little bit more time to get his messages across, and hopefully, hopefully they'll come out better. But you know, certainly all the energy and buzz that there was about having a new coach in place, the team came out completely flat. So yeah, it says a lot about the team. They didn't. They didn't really look like a team that was desperate for a win at all. No, you're right, at all. All right. Well, the Leafs are playing Ottawa tonight, so that's pretty huge. Yeah, it's Hockey Day in Canada. I used to. Uh, I used to get so excited about Hockey Day in Canada. I used to sit in front of the couch from like noon until midnight. Yeah. And watch every minute of uh, programming on on CBC. Do you think because it's on sports that now lost a little bit about if it's luster or it doesn't matter it's it's not it's not because it's on sports and it's because i've gotten older and i have more important things to do <laughs> than sit in front of the television and for watch all hours. different games right yeah yeah um and I'll, I'll probably watch uh part of the night game tonight whatever whoever it is if it's uh, toronto ottawa if that's what they show yeah that's well what... it's for sure toronto ottawa i mean they're gonna show that's gonna be on tv for sure right but i i mean edmonton's playing chicago as well i think and uh calgary's playing vancouver so um, and, I, and I assume we're going to get all those games somehow, depending on what time each one's at. Hi there. Skip and Josh will be right back. To get in touch with them, you can send them an email to skipandjoshshow at gmail.com. You can follow them on Twitter at Skip and Josh, and you can visit their website at www.skipandjosh.com. And now back to the show. This was a very busy afternoon in my household, and I think for you as well. Oh, I wanted to watch so much sports, but I was running around doing some other stuff, and I, I managed to watch as much as I could of everything I could. When you texted me and told me that I could watch the Duke game online, I was stunned. Well, I I I watched um, the the games last year in the ACC tournament. All the games were on on ACC.com. Okay. So I knew about it. And I said, you know what? I'm going to check it out. During the week when the, uh, Duke played Virginia, I tried to watch on that website and I couldn't because they weren't showing it. They don't show every single game. Right? Yeah, I looked. They only show about four or five Duke games the whole season. Yeah. So I, I, I ended up actually watching the whole Duke-Virginia game in, via another source. You know, like the crappy, uh, low-quality um, internet sites. Mm -hmm. And then I watched the game today as well. So it's pretty cool. Yeah, they're on a they're on a huge roll. Like the, right now, I think things are really clicking, and they're they're right there challenging for the top spot in the ACC. They're they're just like one loss away from the top spot. Yeah, and and their schedule, other than having to face North Carolina at Chapel Hill, their schedule is relatively easy. I mean, yeah. as easy as an ACC schedule can be. Right. Um, but they are certainly hot right now. What have they won seven in a row? I think. Yeah. And it's um, and the way I like the way I told you I like the way it's shaping up. I like the rotation that he's got going. I like how every game there's someone else stepping up as the top scorer. So today was Kennard against Virginia it was Allen. Um, um, I mean it was Allen and Tatum, right? So it's like there's today. First of all, it was like uh, very balanced scoring. So I like how everybody's getting a chance to touch the ball and and then they fit, kind of figure out who the hot hand is and they go with it, right? So. Yeah, and uh, the only thing that I didn't like today was Duke had a 12-point lead in the second half, and it dwindled away down to one point. Yeah, well, we it, they have no interior like, defense. It looked like it looked like Wake Forest was going to make a comeback and win the game. Right. Um, luckily, with about a minute and a half left, Duke started to hit some shots, and they had some stops. Wake Forest couldn't score, right. and Duke ended up winning the game. But to to blow a twelve point lead is not um, comforting. I don't love our defense. Like, I don't think we have any interior defense. I know everyone says Emil Jefferson is a great defender, but he's more of a rebounder. I don't see him as like a shot blocking type of presence. So th that's where they're vulnerable, you know, on uh, on the drive game, you know, driving to the hoop type of game. On the perimeter, I think they can defend fairly well. Like that's Coach K's style, right? You know the the super man to man defense. That's that's Duke's style forever. Right. Um, but I'm and they've not, never they've never they've always had problems with uh, defensive rebounding. They've always had that issue. Yeah. A and offensive rebounding, for that matter. They've Duke usually has maybe one big guy on the roster. Yeah. And if that guy gets into foul trouble, whatever year we're talking about, if that guy gets into foul trouble. Or, or injured or whatever, then there's problems. Well, that's what happened this year when Jefferson was injured for a few games. I mean, Harry Giles is big, but he doesn't have. He's younger. He doesn't have the same strength. I mean, when you even when you see Jefferson compared to some of the big men in the league, right? 
I mean, you know, forget about it. And Tatum, by the way, as good as he is, he's so skinny. He's skinny, but he's no Brandon Ingram skinny. He's still built, right? I, I guess I'd have to see him together to know, to yeah. compare. I don't know, but he just does look, he looks very skinny. He seems and and, like they're, and they're deal, kids, but... I guess, so I shouldn't yeah. be surprised. He's, he's what? He's 18 years old. I mean, 19 years old. Something like that. Yeah. So anyway, Duke only has four games left before the ACC tourney. And um, one of them's on CBS uh, next Saturday. So we'll get to see that on television, which is nice. Right. And so I was watching because you told me about the feed on ACC.com. I was watching. I was very impressed, A, that it wasn't blacked out here. And B, that the quality of the picture was very Oh, sharp. the quality on that website is fantastic. Yeah, I was impressed. Very impressed. The, um, the big game today, though, was Kansas over Baylor. That yes. was like, that was monstrous. Now um, Kansas has beaten Baylor both times they faced each other. Yeah. And uh, they've wrapped up their conference title now. A cut, well, I think Kansas has won that conference for the last 12 years or 20 years or something. Who I knows? read today they won 13 years in a row. They beat, they broke a record or tied a record by UCLA for, you know, conference titles. The other side of the coin, Baylor, if you ask someone two, maybe three weeks ago, people thought they were legitimate, you know, number one seed potentially. And now all of a sudden they've been struggling lately. And I think this, you know, uh, is going to drop them from the one line. Yeah. Well, did you see? I'm sure you did. We never talked about it. This is the first year that um, the NCAA selection tournament um, came out with like the top 16. They made the top four in each brackets. Yeah, I watched it for sure. I was very excited and to see it, that. It's really fascinating, actually, because... It, you're right. It, you, you mentioned it to me. I, I'm pretty sure it was on an episode or maybe it was just in conversation. No, I think we mentioned it on an no, episode. No, but the, you were saying they want to try to hype it kind of like how they do in NCAA football. Right. And that you can see how things change from week to week. Right. So, I mean... And that was a week ago and there have been like 100 games played since then. So whatever they said a yeah. week ago was completely out the window Well, that's, that's what's interesting, right? Because you had the four... They had the four number ones, Villanova, Kansas, Gonzaga, Baylor... Right. But now that Baylor lost to Kansas, I wonder if someone else is going to be a number one. I would think so, but they won't be doing this every week. They're not going to do it again now until March 12th, which is going to be uh, okay. selection so Sunday. So we're not, we're not going to really get to see week-to-week -week changes. No, we won't. And right. the other interesting thing about those top 16, um, there wasn't one team from the Big Ten. Uh, and I realize the Big Ten is having maybe an off year. Right. But I'm surprised that at least Wisconsin was not even in the top 16. I was stunned almost. It's so true, right? You know, to, to have like to have like no Michigan State, Michigan, Wisconsin, uh, whoever, right? Like one of those three are always up there, right? Yeah, and I mean, I think if you look at the AP top 25, Wisconsin's in the top 10. I think. Um, okay, maybe they're 11th, whatever. But, but I guess they're down on the conference and the conference schedule, strength of schedule. Must be. Who knows. Wow. Um, but so uh, it's it's pretty incredible in that um, they had Duke as a four seed. I'm sure that's going to change. Duke's um, going to go up now. And fu yeah. it's funny because actually that came out before today's game, obviously, before the Duke game this past. I think it uh, was week. three games ago, even. Right, exactly. Three games ago. And, and had you asked me before that game, actually, I didn't think Duke was going to be in the top 16, to be honest. Um, now that they've won the last three, I would say yes. Yeah. Uh, I think well, they once they beat North Carolina. I think they Carolina. put them there just because they knew, like, how can we not put Duke in the top 16? Right. Well, once they beat North Carolina, right? I mean, you kind of have to consider them a little bit more. Very true. Yeah. I want to mention one thing about Kansas. Nothing to do with their uh, win or anything. But I saw some highlights of the Kansas game that they played, I think, two or three nights ago. Mm -hmm. And Kansas was wearing these uh, throwback jerseys, not yeah. the same ones. That, they were gorgeous. <laughs> Oh yeah, I, I I don't. There aren't many basketball uniforms that I really like, but the throwback Kansas Jayhawks uh, jerseys were gorgeous. Speaking of throwback Kansas, so mm -hmm. Duke played Wake Forest today. Yes, and and, uh, and uh, their coach was uh, Danny Manning. Danny Manning, <laughs> former Kansas. Uh, I didn't even know. I didn't even realize. I, I didn't know he was the coach. Yeah. Didn't so, didn't Kansas win in nineteen eighty eight? I yeah, think. Yeah. With Danny Manning, it was 88, 87, 89, something like that. Somewhere around there. But sticking with college basketball, I was watching uh, my favorite show, PTI, this week, and they had five good minutes with uh, Jay Williams. Oh. Now, we both know Jay Williams. We both like him because he's a former Dukie. Mm -hmm. 
But I have to say, as an analyst, he's fantastic. Lucas, he's a great college basketball analyst. People hate the ESPN um, college basketball programs because it's so Duke centered, right? With Jay Billis and, uh, and Jay Williams and Jay Williams. And I think Seth Davis has even went to Duke, right? Like, and, and Dick Vital didn't go to Duke, but, but he, he loves, loves them. The so a lot of people don't like that. But the fact of the matter is like Jay Williams does a great job. And he tells it like it is. He even said that he thinks North Carolina is a better team than Duke. So we'll see when they play next. He's not time. a homer. No. Well, I mean, he still wants to go for his team. I'm sure he's bleeding Duke blue, but of course. Yeah. So I can't wait for the tournament. Honestly, I think it's going to be one of the best NCAA tournaments we've had in a long time. Because when you look at this top 16 that they've come out with, it's really loaded. It is. And and I was going to mention, you know, usually way back when we started following this, what, 20 years ago? Yeah. You know, Duke would be, you know, whatever, a one, two, three, even maybe a four seed. Yeah. And you knew in the first weekend that Duke's going to cruise through their first two games. Yeah. But now... um, I think everyone... once you get to the second game... The it's second game on the first weekend, you're playing a tough team. Yeah, yeah. So it's like there are no easy games other than maybe the first game if you're facing, uh, I don't know, Lehigh, although Duke lost to Lehigh one year. The one-and-done era has evened things out because the big teams have a lot of one-and-dones, so right. they're young, right? Mm -hmm. So the Kansas is even Duke now. They're, they're, they're the big, big programs have a lot of guys who are freshmen, but – the mid majors, as they call them, the yeah. middle schools, the butlers of the world, or even, you know, Wisconsin or whoever, right? These teams tend to have a lot of seniors. And when you get into tournament time, there's a big difference between a 22 year old and a 19 year old, regardless of how good the 19 year old is. Absolutely. That's a very astute observation. So, so you're right. It, it does even it out. You've got seniors who may not ever play in the NBA, but they've been playing in college for four years versus these young guys who are yeah. leaving after the first year but are going on to an NBA career. And you're right, it does even it out. Yeah, so I mean, just looking at the brackets, like if you look at the NCAA bracket that they came out with, the top 16, imagine like the, what they have as the East, or I don't even know it's the East, but one side of the bracket, they have Villanova, Louisville, Kentucky, UCLA. Like, could you imagine how strong that is? It's ridiculous. That's like a Final Four itself. I know. And I mean, the others are... That, that one stands out as particularly strong. They have Kansas, Duke, Arizona, Florida State, which is also crazy. To me, For me, Kansas is the best team in the country. They proved that today with their win over Baylor. I still think they're the best team in the country. Mm -hmm. Arizona is incredibly underrated. Uh, we know how strong Duke is. And, you know, you can't count out other teams like North Carolina. And, you know, the team that's still undefeated is Gonzaga. Yes, but the only thing I'm going to say about Gonzaga is what everyone else says about Gonzaga. They don't really have a difficult schedule. No, now, no. A they've lot of people won the games that have yeah. been put in front of them, so they've done what they need to do. And if they finish the regular season undefeated, then I have no problem with them being seeded number one. But they're going to have a tough opponent in game two. Like, if they're a one seed, they're going to have to play an eight or a nine. And, um, I mean, right now, Joe Lenardi... According to his bracketology, they're going to have to play USC or Iowa State. Right. That's not that's not necessarily an, an easy game for them. Yeah, but you know what? Gonzaga is – I'm kind of a believer in them because they've gone far in the tournament before. You know, as a, as a big underdog and as a kind of a little school, right? And now they're in the big time, right? So I do have faith in their coach a lot. Yes, they're, they're coached very well and their players are good. Just that they haven't really faced a tough opponent since oh, December. No, I know. They, I mean, they're number four. They're, they rank them as like the fourth number one, only mm. because they're undefeated. And they'll still be not. They'll still be a one seed as long as they go undefeated. They have this guy uh, Karnowski. Have you seen this guy? No. <laughs> he's seven foot one, three hundred pounds. That's big. Yeah, and he's like he has touch around the basket. He's there's not many big men in college, even when you get a guy that's this size, right? That yes. um that actually know how to. They know how to, that have like a post game that can you can get the ball to them back to the basket and then they can turn and shoot. That that game doesn't exist so much because the college players are not um, there. It takes a lot of uh, footwork, a lot of practice. It's a lot of experience and feel to have a game like that. You know, you don't come across many players like that. And <laughs> this guy he can do it, and he's humongous. So I'm excited to see what Gonzaga's you know gonna do. I just can't wait for the NCAA tournament. By the way, I was just looking up some of the history while you were talking. Yeah. So they've never appeared in a Final Four. Okay. But their tournament record is 24 and 19. That's pretty good. 
They've been an attorney 19 times. Wow, 19 times, the Zags. Yeah. Didn't even know. Well, I mean, they've been a staple for like the last 10 years, right? It, like, it seems like they're always in. It does seem that way, yes. I mean, because, you know, they should win their conference every year, so they should get in every year. So the first time that we kind of, I mean, I, everybody knows that, you know, John Stockton went to Gonzaga, but that's like ancient, ancient history, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. But then the first time that they kind of came to prominence was, um, I remember they had that guy, Matt Santangelo, and we yes. liked him because he had the name Santangelo and, you know, the Expos had had fp santangelo right so and he was hitting threes all over the place and then you you mentioned um you know they had adam morrison who was like a high profile player obviously he never did anything in the nba but right and then ever since then they've kind of been a mainstay in the tournament and and everyone likes to root for them they have a cool name you know and <laughs> the the two the two best uh, performances they've had in the tournament yeah they've made it to the elite eight twice in 2015 they made it to the elite eight and then they lost to duke oh yeah and then also in 1999, they made it to the Elite Eight and they lost to Connecticut. I think that's the Santangelo year. That might have been. Yeah. We're going to um, definitely set up our own uh, NCA March Madness group pool. And we'll, and we'll invite all the we'll, listeners yeah. to, to participate. Yeah, we'll invite all the, we'll make our picks on the air um, and we'll invite all the listeners to participate. And, you know, we'll we'll track it and keep everybody, you know, apprised of of the big winners. And if we can pull some prizes out of the prize closet. I maybe... have some great prizes. I think that the uh, listeners would like, for example, Oh, an iPod charger. That's brilliant. Who for, doesn't want that for an old iPod though? Yeah. Great. Who does? It's perfect. An iPod shuffle that doesn't work. <laughs> okay. Um, this is a good prize closet. Let me tell you a sandwich maker that hasn't been used in 20 years. Oh, this is great. Great stuff. I'm going to pull out some stuff. I'm, I'm pretty sure I have like... Um... And maybe even the 2006 swimsuit calendar. Oh, I mean, this is brilliant. We could autograph it. <laughs> Speaking of the swimsuit calendar, maybe we can tweet Jeannie Bouchard and get her to autograph it. Yes. Apparently, she, she answers tweets now. Apparently, yes. Well, <laughs> she doesn't answer mine. <laughs> I just started following her in the event that she ever says something stupid and I can maybe trick her into going on a date with me. <laughs> Check out the Skip and Josh Sports Show on Twitter. You know that little app with the little blue Tweety Bird? Yeah, you can follow them there at Skip and Josh. I did have something I wanted to talk to you about. I have also other things I want to talk about, but go ahead. Okay. Are you? Have you followed the uh, N, uh, NFL uh, Hall of Fame inductions? Not really. I mean, I saw that... Um, Terrell Owens is pissed that he didn't get in. Yeah, uh, so am I. <laughs> you're you're pissed that he didn't get in, Josh. I mean, the 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 press are the ones. The people are voting. I don't know how it's voted on. Whatever, but like, there's people holding a grudge against the guy because they don't like him. Of course. And those people are making themselves look like idiots. The guy is the number two all time in yards in the NFL. Is he really that high? I didn't number even know. two. Only Jerry Rice is ahead of him in career yards. He's ahead of Randy Moss, Isaac Bruce, Tony Gonzalez, T uh, Tim Brown, Marvin Harris. He's, a, he's ahead of everybody. Okay, well, then it sounds like he should be in. And the reasons, I'm hearing reasons. Like, these people that didn't put him in the Hall of Fame are coming up with reasons. Oh, he played on five teams. That means he wasn't a very good teammate. Well, let me ask you this. Let me tell you something. James Lofton is on the Hall of Fame. He played for five teams, right? It doesn't mean he's a bad teammate. Yes, he was a bad teammate. I agree with that. But, but that shouldn't factor into the now, decision. Now, there's something. I, I wasn't planning on talking about this, but I came across something today. So I wanted to. This is what reminded me about the whole Terrell Owens things. So this guy came out today. They asked him why you didn't vote for Terrell Owens. Some dude. Uh, I don't even know his name, and it's not worth mentioning. He said... He had too many drops for my liking. <laughs> he had too many drops. And he came up with saying, he's saying that he led the league in drops at least once. And he was top five in the league in drops at least five other times. Now, first of all, the NFL doesn't keep a stat of drops. So I don't know where he's getting this number. So maybe he has some kind of advanced stats or he's keeping track of stuff himself. But it's not an official stat. Mm -hmm. Now, let me tell you something else. Who's the all-time leader in interceptions thrown? 
Is it uh, Brett Favre? Correct. Is he in the Hall of Fame? Yes. Or he will be. Yeah. Listen, I have no issue. Uh, Who's the all-time leader in walks in baseball? Pitchers issuing walks. Um, that's a good question. I don't. Nolan Ryan. Oh, okay. Who was the all-time leader in caught stealing? Ricky Henderson. Yes. Now, are all those guys going to be in the Hall of Fame? Yes, because when you draw passes, it's because they throw you a lot of passes. Maybe that's the logic behind it. Right. By the way, do they have to um, when when the voters for the Football Hall of Fame do they have to? Are there are their votes made public? Like, do you know who voted for who? I'm not sure. I don't know if you know that next year for baseball, every single voter has to make their votes public. That's good because then there's going to be shaming. Exactly. Yeah, shaming exactly. is powerful. Exactly. Yeah. So we don't have to spend a lot of time on the NFL Hall of Fame. I just wanted to say that like it's ridiculous that Terrell Owens isn't in, and I think he'll get in next year because there's going to be this movement. I think and. Like he's like you said, you know they're they're gonna people are gonna be called out about how come they didn't you know vote for him. So yeah, and he'll get in next year. I mean, hopefully he'll be get a, in. It'll I mean, be a year late, but he'll probably he'll probably get in next year. You can't have all those yards and you know not be in. It's like it's like imagine if the Major League Baseball all time hit leader wasn't in the Hall of Fame. Oh wait, he struck out too many times. Yeah, well he isn't in the Hall of Fame because it's whatever <laughs> gambling. But I mean it's also ridiculous. So since you mentioned baseball, um, I wanted to talk about baseball because this week, pitchers and catchers reported to spring training. I don't know if you follow me on Instagram. I don't think you're on Instagram. I'm not on Instagram. I posted a picture of my cars covered in snow mm -hmm. and the caption of uh, pitchers and catchers are reporting today in spring training. That's a great photo, a great caption. I have to say, and I think you you probably feel the same way. It's a it's a very bittersweet uh, time of year for me, because I get so excited, you know, around springtime. First of all, the weather's hopefully going to improve. Number one, but number two, when I see that spring training starts, it's an it's an exciting time of year for me. But it's also a very sad time of year for me because there are no Montreal Expos. Now yeah. we're not going to get into that because that's a whole episode on its own. It's true. It was such a it's such a when you when we had a team here, it was such a hopeful time every spring training because you're like looking at the team and seeing what the lineup's going to be and what the rotation's going to be. And even if your team, even if you were going to be in last that year, you still had hope for that first day. Yeah. yeah. Up until up until April first, you still thought your team could win the World Series. <laughs> it's so true. <laughs> now, to add insult to injury, mm -hmm. uh, you know that Washington stole the Montreal Expos from us. Mm -hmm. Well. I don't know if you're aware, I'm the aware. Nationals' new spring training facility is in West Palm Beach now. Ah, the Nationals. Where the Expos used to train. <laughs> I don't know if it's the same exact stadium. I don't think so. Because but that, it's the that, same city. I think it was run down, though, where, where we right. were. Right, it's the same city. Yeah. So just uh. another, like, knife in my back. <laughs> Should we go to spring training this year? Catch uh, you games? know what? I've never been, and I'd love to go. I would love to go. I think I'd like to go to the Arizona spring training. You'd prefer that one? It's like a dry heat, you know? Like that makes it any different. <laughs> um, I would love to go to spring training for a week. Uh, I really would. So let's try to plan that. Maybe not this year. It's too late, but okay. maybe next year. Sure. We'll take the I mean, show on the road and we'll do a spring training tour. Yeah, we can have an episode every day, actually. That would be awesome. <laughs> it's probably better to go in March than, than February because that's when the games start. Yeah, yeah. Now it's just Fe nothing. It's February, they're just, I don't think they're playing games until March 1st or something. Right. And by the way, I wasn't going to talk about this, but I'm going to be one of those people who is going to watch the World Baseball Classic. I knew you would because you were the only person that watched the World Cup of Hockey. Yeah. <laughs> so why wouldn't you watch the World Baseball Classic? Where I heard that, um, I heard that Team Canada, some players are playing for Team Canada. I was like, who are these guys? They're not even Canadian. Yeah, it's it's unfortunate. Is that, he playing uh, for Canada, Freddie Freeman? Well, he was technically, I think, born in Canada, or one of his parents um, yeah. is from Canada. Yeah. So he's allowed to play for Canada. Oh, my God. Of all the international tournaments, it's honestly the most useless, and I can't believe you're going to watch it. It's it's not. I mean, I don't like the way they do it because, you know, you're in this uh, – Canada's always in the same pool as USA. Yeah, so. Because of geographic reasons. Um, and, of course, USA is a heavily favored team always. But and, and this year Canada's team, like their best players, Russell Martin isn't playing, Michael Saunders isn't playing. Russell Joe Martin Arbato said he's only gonna play if he plays shortstop. 
No, no, no. He actually wanted to play this year, and he said he'd play any position. He didn't care. Mm -hmm. But he can't, I think... I, I, I don't exactly understand why. I think maybe he's coming off an injury or something, and mm -hmm. it's not that he doesn't want to. He wants to, but he's not allowed to. Who's catching for Canada? Joe Siddle? I have no idea. <laughs> I really have no idea. Okay. The team is not very strong, and um, I just hope they win a game. Oh, God, I can't believe you're going to watch it. Well, what else are you going to watch on a on a Wednesday night at 10 o'clock? Reruns of Two and a Half Men? I'd rather watch the World Baseball Classic. <laughs> the Skip and Josh Sports Show is back. Have you watched 24? Legacy? Yeah, I'm up to date, yeah. Me I'm too. completely up to date. Are you enjoying it? I am enjoying it. I, I, I thought that, um, I mean, if I could critique the last episode a little bit. Mm -hmm. The... Uh, the the way that you know he was stuck in the police um, station, the time it took for the cops to figure out who he was, mm -hmm. it's very fast. Was was very quick. I know they went that from like that. Normally, normally in in twenty four things take long to happen, which yeah. is what I like about it because it's it's supposed to be realistic, but that happened so quickly. They went from like there's about twenty guns on him, twenty cops pointing guns at him. And then all of a sudden he's like, we've got so-and-so on the phone. She says, you're okay. Everybody next thing you know, oh yeah, they, yeah we, we got a car for you and here's your weapon. And like, because she was also like, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, she was under arrest as well. Yeah. I, and then all of a sudden she's not. Yeah. I mean, you have to, you have to kind of suspend belief, you a know, little, when you yes. watch these shows and you can't think of, you can't look at all the little details. Otherwise you go crazy. But I didn't love the first two episodes. I wasn't going to watch it. My wife really wanted to watch it. So I stuck with it for the third episode. And I actually did enjoy the third episode. So I will stick with it to the to the next episode. I want to strangle Grimes. I want to strangle that guy. He's mentally unstable. It's not his fault. He's got PTSD from the war. Like, does he really think he was going to get away with that? I don't like, know. Like, yeah, he's they'll in, pay he's for the They're not going to pay you. They're going to kill you and take it. I know. But the guy's not, you know, he's not all there. What can you and do? Enough about 24. Okay. Well, I know. I mean, I don't, we can make a whole episode about 24, but you know, but when so the I Americans the... start, are we going to like do an American segment? Sure. Why not? Why not? Okay, good. I like to do that. Um, Spike, I just want to tell you one more thing about TV. Yeah, you know, uh, go ahead. Cause I want to ask you a question about TV as I'm well. I'm watching a really good show. Yeah. Is it with Danish subtitles? No, that's something else. I wish they were having another season of the bridge, but that's not it. It's the show Cardinal. Okay, I've heard of it, but I've never it's, seen it's it. It's a Canadian show. It's made by CTV. They hyped up a lot of commercials about it, so it really intrigued me. There's only six episodes. Um, they've aired four, so there's two more to go. And it's like a cop show. And uh, it really on regular, is... On regular TV? It's on CTV. Regular okay. CTV. Yeah. And it's it's really, really fantastic. They try to make a, like a Canadian version of like True Detective, sort of. Mm -hmm. And it's it's succeeding on all counts. I'm, I'm glued to it. I can't wait for the next episode. And I'm going to be disappointed when it's over because there's only two more episodes left. They're calling it a six-part TV event. And now they, you know, they're on four out of six right now. So it's worth it to, um, to catch up on it if you can. Well, I can get it on demand if it's on CTV. Yeah, so. it is. It is. It's a Canadian show. It's set like in northern Ontario. Okay. Yeah, it's really, really worth watching. I would recommend it to all the, our Canadian listeners. And speaking of TV shows, mm -hmm. since you brought it up, did I hear correctly that Homeland has started again? Oh. Well, how could they? Because she's in charge of CTU now. No, but she's not on Homeland anymore. <laughs> I know. <laughs> um, I saw a trailer for it, so I knew that there was going to be another season, but I haven't, I haven't, heard about it for sure i'll definitely check it out though i, okay. I mean i don't love the show i don't i mean i loved loved season one mm, me too and i felt that there's no way they could come back with a strong season two and they did it was good and then season three was utter garbage i i said i'm never watching it at again and my friend watched season four and he said, you know, it's worth watching. You should watch it. So then I stuck around and now I'm like still on the homeland, you know, viewership. But I'm not uh, I'm not crazy about it. Season six started, by the way. It's official. I, I just I just confirmed it. All right. Well, I'm going to have to uh, get those episodes and watch. In fact, um, in fact, today, I don't know what time mm -hmm. is going to be episode five. What? Of, se of season six. Oh, this is craziness. Well, I have a lot of TV to catch up on. 
The Skip and Josh Sports Show is on now. So I just want to follow up on something we talked about. I don't know if it was last episode or two episodes ago or three episodes ago. Mm-hmm. As you know, I never miss an episode of PTI. Yeah, we you love it. And sure enough, this week alone, they talked about hockey three times. <laughs> yeah. One of them was the Antoine Vermette incident with the with the uh, linesman. Yeah. yeah. So oh, negative. But thing. but but this is great. I bet you I know one of the things. And finally, they're going to talk about something positive. Go go ahead. Well, what was the other? What was the second? So one thing? was the Antoine Vermette incident. Yeah. The other was uh, the Alex Burroughs fight with yeah. uh, Justin Falk and Robin and Robin Leonard. Yeah, and then the other thing was something about Yarmir Yager. Yes. <laughs> yes. So they finally said something positive about the NHL. Finally, but out of three things, two of them were not. And Tony, Pro- and I know Tony. I mean, I listened to his podcast. I'm sure he said it on PTI as well about how Yager was great for every team except for the Capitals. Yes, that's right. He did mention <laughs> that's it. That's great. So great. He did mention it. So, do you have anything that's really bugging you this week that you want to like uh, get off your chest and you know cleanse yourself of things that bug me? I do. Thank you very much for asking. So. Um, This is news to me, at least it was news to me a few weeks ago. As of this season, the NHL has now instituted bye weeks for every team where they don't play for five days. Mm -hmm. So when I first heard this, I'm like, what? Has has the NHL become the NFL? Um, First of all, I don't think that there should be bye weeks in the NFL or in any league for that matter. Certainly not in hockey. So so now you have these bye weeks and the Canadians just had theirs. Um, so what it does is it means that when during the rest of the schedule, when you're not on your bye week, you're playing a more compressed schedule. And I don't see how that benefits anybody at all. And if you notice, most of the teams, when they come back from their bye week, they tend to lose afterwards. Yeah, like the Habs did today. Like the Habs did today. That's just another example. The coaches I know don't like the bye weeks. And Let's get real here for a second. I get that these are athletes and I get that there's a grind of the season and, you know, they're into game 58 or 59 or 62 or whatever it is. I get that. But I mean, you're playing a sport. You know, you're not going to work every day sitting at a desk in front of a computer. I go to work every day. I don't get a bye week, you know, and these guys, they don't play, uh, you know, 12 months a year. Guess what? I'm into day 5,840 of my job. Correct. Me too. So, I mean, these guys, they're so coddled and they're babied and it's ridiculous. And the fact that they get these bye weeks, it's just so aggravating. But you're, and the now, one, and, you're the one and that now told the, me that the bye week was something that the NHLPA bargained in as a concession, right? Yeah, exactly. So, so in other words, uh, the NHL wanted to go to three-on-three for the All-Star game. And so the players said, okay, we'll go to three-on-three for the All-Star game if you give each team a bye week. I don't even understand how that negotiation even comes up. It's so ridiculous. So so anyway, what bugs me is the bye weeks. The, the bye weeks in the NHL right now, but in any league. Like, for example, and I've mentioned this before, the fact that there's a week between the um, AFC and NFC championship game and the Super Bowl. Well, there doesn't a, need to be... A, that's the stupidest thing in the world. There doesn't need to be a week in between. Yeah. And, and I mean, I uh, know why they do it in the NFL, why they have a bye week, because they want to make more money. So instead of the season being 16 weeks, the season is 17 weeks. It's one more week of television ratings, right? But fine. in in hockey, I don't get it. And and I'm going to like do a what bugs me that's like a tangent of your what bugs me. Okay. So I think I know what it's going to so, be, but go ahead. So, you know, they're, they're asking like Bettman why he's opposed to sending NHL players to the Olympics. Mm-hmm. And he was like, I don't see how we could we could um, we could do a compressed schedule, you know, that's going to accommodate the Olympics. You're doing it now, buddy. Yeah. And it w- that's and not it- that's not the you know, he just says things and it, and anything that comes out of his mouth is not true. That's and not the thought, real reason. Course. And and then, you know, they had the World Cup of Hockey this year before the season started, which mm-hmm. is also one of the reasons why the schedule is compressed. Right. Exactly. So, I mean, he talks nonsense. And and everyone sees through him, but yet somehow he's still the commissioner. You know. Yeah, because he makes the he makes the owners money. I guess. And that's really all they care about. Yeah. It's unfortunate. No one cares about the quality of the game. If they did, there wouldn't be thirty one teams in the league. Or fighting. Right. 
you notice how after every single whistle, there's always pushing and shoving. There might not even be a fight, but there's always pushing and shoving. And, and the game takes so much longer because of that. If you watch any of the games in the Olympics, they're done in two hours. That's so no, true. Because there's only no the skill players. And yeah. <laughs> That's so true. And they know that if they even, you know, blow on another player, they're going to get... Uh, yeah, I know. In the Olympics, you have penalty. all the skill players. They're out there trying to score goals and make plays and play nice-looking hockey and play the game right, you know? So there's none of that nonsense. Let me add something to the the bye week thing. Yeah. I, I don't, I, I'm sure you noticed during the NBA playoffs, sometimes a team will play on a Sunday and then they won't play another game until a Saturday. They'll go a whole week without playing. And I know it's because of television, but that's ridiculous. In the middle of a series, you take like four or five days off. It's just ridiculous. And that's the NBA. That's the way they do it. It's also all about the ratings. And now the NBA is definitely not going to go away from that because they just signed a bajillion dollar TV contract. So now TV owns that league. Well, TV owns the NHL too. Yeah, that's well, why you see, that's why you see day games during the playoffs in the NHL. Yeah, that's so true. All right, well, good talking to you. I don't know if you have anything more you wanted to talk about this week. No, I think that was a good show. I think we're done. I Love mean, it. I'm done. Yeah, me too. And uh, we'll uh, reconvene next week. Thanks to everybody for listening this week. Please drop us a like on iTunes. Give us a like and follow our Facebook page. Also on Twitter. If you go to skipandjosh.com, you can see all the links to all the, the different sites. And I want to give a shout out to, I don't know who they are, but did you know that every week we have a we have downloads from the United Kingdom? I didn't know that. Every so week? if you are the listener from the United Kingdom, please send us an email at uh, skipandjoshshow at gmail.com. We want to know who you are. Yeah, that'd be great. There was also a download this last week from Poland. And I don't know who that is. And one this week from Chile, who I actually do know who that is. We're huge in Poland. We're huge. And we're huge. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Talk to you later. Okay. Bye. The Skip and Josh Sports Show is over now. Don't worry. There'll be another episode soon. <laughs>